This is the Chief and Sean Show, and we are live in the 405. We're not live, but we are back. We're live. No, we're not. We are back. And we're live. Weekly, not live. We're sort of live. Okay, to uh, everyone listening, or, well... The well, f- the, the people who are listening. The few the that few. listen. Here's the deal. <laughs> Speed Society is going to be hosting all of these podcasts. You're going to be seeing a ton from these guys. I've, like, they're yeah. how big are they, Sean? Uh, it's the biggest automotive website in the world, and I mean, they got a lot of cool shit. Yeah, we're stoked to be working with guys like that for sure. Anytime we can align ourselves with other huge automotive people, this is perfect. So, also, stop listening now and go and like it and comment on it. And the sooner you do that, hopefully, the more podcast episodes you'll hear yeah go ahead yeah the crow 405 murder nova midway street cars like it comment on us tell us who you are tell us why you listen to it keep this going please there are people that are, don't want this to keep yeah, there's going people right now trying to make trying to put it into this they, they so, don't want us on the air and we got guys like speed society that want to help us keep it going so welcoming us let's do it rock and roll help everybody out and while you're there check it out their website's awesome welcome 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 back to another Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tuesday. It's a running joke, this Tuesday it thing. It is Tuesday. But it's getting ridiculous. It is. It really is. We're we're really, really not good at that. We're pieces of shit, man. I heard it's been like 59 days since we've been in here. Who the fuck is counting? Somebody how many online days? did. They're counting how many days since yeah, we've done a podcast? Yeah, they said it's been 59 days since a a Tuesday has came. Listen, people, you don't have to remind us every six months. We're going to get on it. <laughs> you know I mean, we're going to get the shit done. Yep. <laughs> if we say we're going to give you a podcast, we will. You don't yep. have to remind us every six we months. We never lie. Yeah, we never lie. Oh, 59 days, and somebody went through the trouble of counting that. Huh? Yes. Damn. That makes me feel bad. Really? Oh, well, no, not really. Okay. I should, though. I was going to say, you got a lot of other things that no. you could probably feel bad about if you're going to feel bad about something. <laughs> I feel like I should feel bad, but, you know, well, just like everything else, I don't. Yes. Oh, well. Uh, so, it's March 15th. I don't know why I want to say the date today. Yeah, why? Like saying, maybe because of the 59 days thing. I, I, don't feel even, like, I don't even know what the date is. I feel like it's March 15th. I feel like it's got to be June. No. No, it's fucking 37 degrees outside. It's so cold. I don't even want to get out of bed. You don't till noon. I was here at 930 this morning because you said podcast at 10. Yeah, and then I was on the phone dealing with producers and discovery uh, uh, people for that show. All pieces of shit. For that TV show thing that those guys have that we don't talk about. Uh, Which, you know, I don't know. It's on its way out. We're getting pretty rowdy. I don't know how much longer they're going to... Put up with our shit. Put up with our shit, yeah. I mean, we kind of just let them have it now. Yeah. You know what I mean, at first there was like a, hey, we don't want to cause too much trouble. Now we're like, yeah, fuck you know it. I mean? Now we're just like, get the fuck out of here. Um, There's a reason that the show, in my opinion, is still does as good as what it does. is because you can say whatever you want about reality TV, and I get it, because I watch reality TV. <clears throat> I can tell what's real and what's not. Shit we do is real. I don't care what anybody says. You can argue the fact, but what's even funnier is most of the stuff that we do that people calls bullshit on is 100% real. And then the shit that they say, oh man, that's fucking real is, you know, bullshit. A, a, well, not necessarily bullshit, just taken to the next level. Yeah. Because nothing we've ever done is bullshit. Even, you know, the whole cop car stuff that we used to do or well, the, I don't know. the ice cream dream, so, that was still shit that we would do. No, it's we, just we yeah. took it to the next level. Yeah. I don't know. There was that one time whenever you said we didn't bring our cars. That was bullshit. <laughs> that was a total fucking lie. <laughs> hey, I ain't lie. I ain't never hey, lied since then. But, you know, but if you if that would have been in court, I have to go to, you know, have your back on that deal. You were coerced. I was. You, it was entrapment. Man, dude, hey, it was like, it was a good 15-minute fucking deal there where he was like, just say it. Just say and, it. And I was, no. And, and you didn't know where they were going to use it. You know what I mean? It could have been on any episode. Well, they tried to get me on something the other day. I'm not even real sure if I could talk about this, but I forgot to tell you about it. But they tried to get me to say, I needed this rain delay to give me a little more time to work on my car. And I looked at them and I go, this this is where y'all try to get Chief to say the rain delay and it didn't rain? Yes. And I'm glad me and you had talked about that because they tried to get me to say it. 
hey, and he just kind of put his head down, and I go, this is it, isn't it? This is this. So Chief wouldn't say it, so you're trying to get me to say that there's a Damn. rain delay, and there was no rain delay? And I go, yeah, I'm not going to say that. Nice. Man, hey, otherwise I'd have just said, man, because – but you Honestly, know how stupid they make you look? You get gun shy. Like, if you say, if you would have said, you know, oh, this rain delay deal, then they would have shown the next shot, sun's out, yeah. birds chirping, yep. no rain. You know what I mean? Like, they, may, they just make Just like whenever I go, God damn, that was a good pass. And they show me shaking the fucking tires, it's smoking like, them the whole oh, fucking yeah. way. Or whenever I go, man, I don't know. It just, it shook the whole way. And it was one of the best passes And I everybody's ever made. jumping up and down after your pass, yeah. you know. But yeah. they just don't They just know. can't get right. They don't know the difference. You know what I mean? They don't know what it, and that's. You know, you know how hard it is for me because I have to narrate every pass. So it's like I'm supposed to say, "Oh, I step back and bang the light." And man, those cars left so hard. And then it's it's, and it's they're shows crawling. Them fucking turds out. Yeah, of it's like when Petey Smallball and Boosted Race, and I was like, "Yeah, they both left hard." Yeah, dude. No, nah. no, no. Nah. Even Boosted, no. Boosted almost got out and started walking. You know. Yeah. So it just that's why we get so gun shy about saying this shit because you know the internet's going to call you out on it. Well, and it's worse right now too because normally it, it's it's a, the the timing of it is a little bit better than it is right now. We waited all winter, so now we're doing interviews and stuff on races that happened months. I don't remember those races. Yeah, what's, yeah, what's really weird about the show is like some of the races happened two months ago, but the interviews we just filmed this week. Or some I mean? of the races happened two weeks ago and we're doing the interviews. Yeah, yeah. And those are the ones that are always the best because I can get excited about them and I can tell you exactly what happened and detailed stuff that happened. I mean, because yeah. there's shit that goes on inside the car sometimes when, I mean, that's exciting to me. I want to hear about what goes on, you know, inside right. your car while you're making a pass. I want to know if your fucking fuel tech falls off the dash, you know, because it's yeah. shaking so bad. I don't remember most of that shit. Yeah, I don't want to know what goes your on fuel in tech, Dominator's car, though. Does your fuel tech fall off the dash it when it shakes? In the old car. Because mine hey, does. The FT600, though? Well, that's because they mounted that bitch you right. You ain't lying. Not mine. That thing mine comes fall, out all the time. But and I have to reach up during the pass and try yeah. to put it back on. Yeah, my 500 used to come off all the time in the Crow Mod because it shook so bad and hit those bumps and fucking on the street and jumped off the ground yeah. and shit. <sighs> so, uh, we're filming. Since we're talking about that show... On that deal, that channel or whatever network yeah. that we don't really talk about. Yeah, we're, Street Outlaws uh, on Discovery Channel. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the one. Uh, Phantom, we're going to strike that from the record. <laughs> yeah. Phantom has no idea what we're talking about. He's on his phone over there, doesn't mind paying yep. attention. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever, boss. Yeah, you guys sound great. Yeah, you, yeah, you sound great, guys, yeah. Uh, we are filming right now for, we're finishing season nine, which airs in three weeks. Yeah. Premieres in three weeks. We haven't even Is finished. Is it three weeks? It's after Mega Race. I think that Mega Race is March twenty seventh. Oh, is it? So there's a whole another week of us building, and then another. So there's, God damn. So now we get to hear, watch that whole motherfucker, and still hadn't seen a race yet. How long y'all gonna drag this thing out? It's Mega Race. Jesus. It's gonna take a mega time, and and it's gonna it's a lot of mega building and mega nothing, and then finally there's gonna be a mega race. Well, they gotta show us really build our car. <laughs> well, and so and car bowling. You yeah, know, in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. How long ago did we do that car bowling? Uh, I didn't have any tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> boy, we did. Whenever we was riding around in the truck, though, didn't we? Oh man, just tattoos everywhere. Yeah, we look like a couple of freaking parolees. You look like a thug. Hey man, I resemble that remark. <laughs> uh, I bitch, I might be. Yeah, I, bitch, I could be. <laughs> um. So we're filming season nine. We're finishing up season nine right now. And then the great thing about it is the ratings are so good. People are so interested. The fucking energy is so huge around that stupid TV show about me and my buddies doing shit for whatever we do for fun on a Saturday night. That's what yes. the show's about. Yes. Literally. Yes. And that you guys, the fans have taken this deal to a whole nother level. I mean, it's unbelievable. We're, we're going to start filming season 10 in a month you know what I mean as soon as we get done with season 9 we're going right into season 10 we're going to be filming Fucking season 10 10 seasons 10 seasons of a show about street racing yeah a show about an illegal activity yeah but we've been doing it way longer than that yeah but see, 10 seasons 10 fucking seasons these man. these California types told us we'd never make it past 1 yep that's you know why we mean? did whatever the fuck we wanted. Yeah, I remember we'd ask him, hey, can we can we do this? Can we say this? Yeah. Yeah, no, who gives a fuck? Nobody's watching Hey, can anyway. I race this car right here? Yeah, yeah, who gives a shit? Nobody's going to watch it anyways. Yeah, yeah, dude. And then it kept saying, we're one and done, one and done. Dude, 10 
seasons. Yes. We will hit 100 episodes this year. 100 episodes. Out of control, man. For something that we used to do every weekend for the fun of it. And we still do, though. Like, yep. that's that's the thing. That's what's so great about Street Outlaws is it keeps going full circle. Like, Street Outlaws is like, I don't know. I don't even know how to. It sounds weird. And I'm here lately. I'm looking really crazy on TV, and I'm saying weird things. I'm in the. I got some spiritual thing going on with me or something. Yeah. I mean, that, like the universe brought dude, the car to you. That that commercial where I said the universe brought the car to me, man. Like, dude, I looked so fucking crazy. Yeah, they probably had to edit that out. I probably went, "What the fuck?" I feel like that's where I'm going. Though I feel like like the next few years of Street Outlaws, I'm just gonna get crazier and crazier because the universe is doing some weird shit to me, man. Like, well, and, you know, and and the weed is too. So what? You mean like the wheat? Like in yeah. my bread? <laughs> no. <laughs> did you see the hashtag on Instagram? I did. And so Smoking did everybody bowls else. and taking souls. I love it. I saw it and so did everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, like 30, thought, dude, the Instagram is lit, son. It is. My Instagram is lit. It is. It's crazy. And like I guess, way more than mine. There's so many people on there that are just the greatest fans ever, too. You know what I mean? Like, And you'll see them, some jerk off that we lied to about the podcast having another one next week. Some jerk off will get on there and go, Hey, where's the podcast yeah. guys? What the fuck, man? You guys said you're going to do cool. one last week. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. that's a cool picture. I see you had time to go make a hit. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got, <laughs> you ain't got time to fucking sit in the fucking mess shack for an hour. <laughs> and then some other fan, even though we lied to them too, they'll stick up for us. They'll yeah. be like, what do you mean? Wait, Every Tuesday. Tuesday hasn't came yet. Every Tuesday. Like is it, is it Tuesday? Then you're not gonna get a podcast, dude. It's great. Yeah. I love my in my Instagram. That's the only one that I, that I still want to do myself. You know, like Facebook and stuff. I don't even want to do myself I anymore. Know. I just want to let somebody yeah. else do it because Facebook is so mean. The people on there are so rude. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot. God, dude. And Instagram's just, cool still. And, you know, and there's so much money in the Facebook thing and the surrounding the Facebook. So it's like it's just gotten kind of icky over there. You know what I mean? Whereas Instagram. I still do that. It's all me. You know yep. what I mean? And I still, I still have fun too. with it, you know? And hell, sometimes I still even read the comments, you know? I do. And I then, commented on your, sometimes on yours the other day about something. Sometimes Can't remember I what respond, was. you know? Like the other day, this guy was talking to you. He's like, Justin, you just need to shut up about build your own stuff. You didn't build shit. You don't build anything. And I was like, I sat there for a minute. And I was like, you know, I got 30 seconds to kill. Yeah. Let me call this guy a faggot you or something. probably driving. Yeah, I was driving, you know. Yeah. I got something. I got 30 seconds to kill. So I was like, hey, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't know. You ain't the, no gangster, yeah, bitch. Know, I might be. You don't know shit, man. I built the fucking motor in that car. Yep. I fucking ran all the custom hard lines and built them all bitches myself for the brakes. Like, yep. you know what I mean? I fucking, I worked on that damn car. I built the tune from scratch. I fuck, you know, like I drive it. I tune it. I haul it everywhere. Like, yep. I don't understand. It wasn't, ain't nothing in the rules. You know, of, of any of the shit that we do that says that you have to do every fucking thing on your car yourself. There's a difference no, in... We, no, we have a team for that. I got a shop. But we didn't outsource anything. But name one person that has built a car that's as fast as my shit that did, does it all themselves. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure that his dumb ass built his own 14, 13 second, you know, new Mustang. He put a programmer and exhaust on it, you know? Yeah. Be, built not bought baby yeah you know what I mean? did but, he weld the pedals in it well like you did know, he fucking you know i mean did he di there's i mean a certain level there's a difference in building a car there's a certain level in motorsports where to go fast you have to find who it is in your crew that does what they're best at and then let them do it Otherwise, oh i could have built my whole fucking car but you think i'd trust it well hell no <laughs> well not yeah but like you could have. You could have. Yeah. You could have took your time and learned how to do everything yourself the right way and everything. And took your time to do it. But then you end up like George Ray. Remember George Ray? I always remember George Ray. I do. Remember him? I do. He fifteen years he built this car himself. Yes. He did everything himself. Yes. He learned how to do everything on the car. Built it from front to back, bumper, everything. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the dude didn't mine his own oil for the fucking thing. Built the whole car himself. It was his life's work. He takes it out, crashes it. First first day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's gone. So, you know, and I'm not saying that it was his work that crashed. I'm just saying the reality that sucks is that he spent 15 years at learning how to do it himself and then he crashed it. You know, that sucks. Yep. That's a lot of time wasted. I want to race. He didn't get another one either. You know I mean, think. I don't ever, I've never said that I build cars. Never have. I, nope. I race cars. Nope. I've never claimed to be some sort of welder. 
or <laughs> I mean, I can make some shit stick together, but not that I want to go as fast as what my car will go. I remember that trailer you welded on. Fucking right. I did that mm. in my garage. It didn't make didn't, it. I didn't even have any gas. Hey, it made it there. It did make it there. It fell apart on the way home. That's true. It did what it had to do then. Yeah, it did. Your welds were perfect. That's right. Uh, so anyway, season 10, this, this, this TV show has just eclipsed everything anybody thought it would do. It's gone so far that it's, it's a, it tells the future. You know, this show predicts the future. It tells, I mean, it, it just reaches everybody. It makes you laugh. It makes you cry. Like it literally does dude. Like PD Smallbox said he cried. The dude ain't never cried. Yep. You know, that's cool. This show is cool. That's what, that's why it's still going. I'm excited about it. And here lately, like I'm getting a slump, you know, two seasons ago, last season, started getting a slump. I didn't really, wasn't really into this crow mod thing. You know, I did it because I wanted to be competitive. I wanted to win. I needed a car that was right then, right there. That's what that car was. It was perfect for that, you know, and it did its job well, but it wasn't, it just wasn't me. Yeah, but you didn't love it. You know what I mean? It wasn't me. Nope. Not at all. Like I didn't think about it nonstop. You know what I mean? I wasn't, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't my thing. And when I won, it was an, it was empty. You know what I mean? I'm supposed to win. I got a goddamn pro mod on the street, you know? So I got kind of in a slump. So then I wanted to go do that NHRA thing. You know, I wanted to race pro mod, NHRA pro mod. That is one of my favorite classes and always has yeah, been. you've wanted to do that since the day I met you. Yes. You know, I, I mean, that's like, that was, that was one of your, you know, long time goals. And I almost had the chance here, here, you know, this year. I was going to do it this year. Oh, you had the chance. I had it just wasn't the right chance. It wasn't the right chance. So I decided not to go NHRA for this year, and I really have no plan on going NHRA in the in the future at any point. They still want me, and they're still calling me and shit, you know. <laughs> but I'm gonna hold out on that deal. <laughs> they're like, "Look, you bring the Murder Nova up here, we're gonna let you run." <laughs> they're like, "You you don't even got to tag it." The, they know better. They ain't yeah. calling you. <laughs> they don't want that. They don't want you to hang up on them. Fuck no. Uh, but so I got into this thing where I want to do this NHRA deal and I got all pumped up on it and I was excited about it. And I was like, I want to show these guys that I can race at that level with anybody. You give me a little bit of money. I'll be competitive with anybody. And that was my, I was, I was pumped up about it. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't. And then I started dealing with some of the politics of finding the money. Cause it costs ridiculous money to go do that. And then I kind of got down. And so I was like, man, you know, the street racing on the show thing with the crow mod was, you know, eh, you know what I mean? And then the, the no prep racing, I never really liked that. Yeah. And then the radio racing, I love that shit. Oh yeah. That's a good time. You know, always, but it's only two, three times a year. You know what I mean? And then the NHRA deal, I was just like, God dang dude. So then I, I dude, I sat down with myself and I was like, well, myself in a yeah bag of the finest mm-hmm. and, uh, of my pappy's finest. <laughs> And I decided all I want to do this year is street race with my friends. That's it. It's the best time, man. I want to street race with my buddies. Okay, so that's what I want to do. Now, where can I street race with my buddies? Because I love the fans, but there's times when I just want to race car and I don't want to be called an asshole because I didn't take a picture with everybody there and I don't want to be because you're trying to race and I don't want to be rushed around and I don't want to be poked and prodded and I don't want to have a lot you know I don't want to sell shirts all the time like I don't always want to do that sometimes I just want to hang out and be me you know what I mean and not have to worry about what I say in front of who and all that stuff so sometimes that's all I want to do I don't really worry about that anyways well yeah yeah you don't you don't <clears throat> give a sh- you don't give two shits no you could you'd never you'd never do good with a publicist no <laughs> so and the place that I can do that is Street Outlaws. Yeah, they have this deal that I, they're letting us do nowadays. It's called Street Outlaws. I get to street race with my buddies, the guys that I've been racing with for a long time, the guys that know me as me, not as anything else. You know yeah. what I mean? The guys that can see through my bullshit and the guys that can also respect me for what I have been with them the whole time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Dude, that's why I decided. I was like, I just want to street race with my buddies. And where else can I do that any better than Street Outlaws? Yeah, but the the, the car is what really did it. The car. The car did it. The car it was needed. You know what I mean? The I, car brought you back I, to what you used to be. Right. But I also. Because you, you, you got lost said, there for a little while. I even said, though, when I went to number one in the Pro Mod, as soon as I got to number one, 
First thing I did, I pulled back to the starting line, pointed at you, and I said, okay, now it's time to get me yep. back in a steel car. Yeah, you said, I'm done. This I'm is done. it. That was the last, yep. that was the last and I was so fu- Whenever I hugged you, it was genuine. Yeah. Because I was so fucking no, I felt, happy. I felt the boner and everything. I know. It was, I, I tried know. to do the ass out hug. I know, you know but there mean? wasn't, that, no. No, it wasn't no. happening. No. no. You so, had to do the ass out hug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Otherwise, it would have it penetrated. You're done. It's digging into my <laughs> hip. Uh, yeah. So, and then, so when I realized that that's what I wanted to do, it was okay we should start thinking about building a car or, or, or finding a car, doing something with a car, you know? And, yeah. and, uh, dude, it was no shit though. I got this daily driver. The plan was to drive that around for, you know, a few fall weeks, in love with months, it. fall in love with that car and then cut it the fuck up and make a race car out of it. Cause I wanted to make sure the next car I, ha- I, I had love for, it, and that was, had soul and heart. And yeah. Character. And memories before, before it was just a race car. Right. And then, just like on the show, the universe brought that car to me. Then all of a sudden, they call and say they want to do this mega race deal. Worked out perfect. You know what I mean? And it was like, we want you to do this mega race deal. You got to get with uh, Richard and Aaron. You got Aaron from Fast and Loud. You guys are going to race them on TV in this big event. And I was like, okay, cool. And then they were like, but you got to deal with them on the rules and come up with everything between each other. I said, all right, cool. So we got on the phone, and obviously – they the premise behind the show was we step out of our element they step out of theirs that was the yes. whole reason for it. otherwise like who's who cares about the race if there's not a reason for it you well know what and, I mean? like, and this was before the big breakup the first time that we actually got on the phone and talked about rules with them richard and aaron was on the phone right so this no, was the second time yes the first yes. time they just know the first time we just got on the phone it was with the producers and the, and the discovery channel guys and then richard and aaron and me and you yes and we all got on the phone and they just asked us if we wanted to do it. And they were like, the internet has been talking about you guys racing each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, can we make this happen? And we agreed, sure, we'll do it. They agreed they would do it. And then we said, okay, you know, we'll talk to you in a week and we'll have an idea of what we want to do as far as rules go. And so Richard and Aaron had their idea of rules and we had our idea of rules. We well, hashed it out on the phone. And and the whole <clears throat> Richard and Aaron versus me and you is what it was. And then the, the gas monkey garage was supposed to be the ones to face farm because truck. The, yeah. The, the, in the, in the beginning it was me and you versus Richard and Aaron. Yes. And then gas monkey garage, the rest of the guys in the garage, the sleeveless dude who, who's yep. cool as fuck, by the Man, way, Man, I liked all the guys. Mike from gas Coy, monkey. Cool as fuck. Mike is way. really cool. The um, sleeveless guy, the sleeveless Jason, guy. What, Jason, one guy's yeah, Jason. He's actually from Oklahoma. He's, he's actually he's from really Oklahoma. Cool, he's a cool know? dude. They were all really they were nice. All really nice. I didn't get to meet the Mexican cat. Um, which one's that? The one on their show. The, he says he's really slow or whatever. The one who said shit about our nicknames. It was, Oh, okay. You know, uh, I didn't get to meet him, but I'm yeah, sure, no, I'm sure I didn't, he's I didn't cool meet too. Him either. Uh, but like, it was supposed to be those guys versus Farm Truck and Asian, and then me and Sean versus Richard and Aaron. Yes. And it was, you know, that was going to be the deal. Well, then the second time we talked to them uh, on the phone with all the producers and everybody. I mean, did they even filmed it? You know what I mean? So yeah. it was like a, it was a real deal. So yeah, now, now, was, now all that's missing or something. Yeah. Well, there's no way to, there's no way to get away from it. You know? So when we talked about it, they had their few rules that they were, you know, cool with. And we had our rules that we were cool with. And then the rules ended up being that because of the premise of the show, like nobody, nobody cares that we're going to race fast and loud. Unless there's something cool about it, you know what I mean. Well, and, so and what we I even talked about because we would bring my, we'd just bring my pro mod. Yeah, and we even talked about it. nobody gives a shit about seeing two fucking pro mods race. Right, and then it was well, we'll just bring the murder nova, but nobody wants to see us take a car that already exists and race them if they because they don't have a race car. Yeah, you know so I mean? they made a couple of rules, and so, we made and a couple of rules. So their, so their deal was as long as the rules reflected that we couldn't bring either car, you know what I mean? So as long as it had steel roof and quarters and a vent tag, that throws out my pro well, mod. And, and then the, and then the, the, small, the block, small block, 500 cubic inches or less, that throws, throws, that, that that throws out my car. Right. So the way it worked out was so that we would build a car, you know what I mean? Because no one knows that we build cars or have ever built cars, and we're not, we don't claim to be car builders. No. So and fast, fast and loud guys were like, look, 
you know, we don't claim to be race car drivers, but we're we're car builders. So it was basically well, the old thing. He even said that of, on his like, show. It's basically the old thing of two kids arguing at baseball. Well, I can hit better than you. Well, I can run better than you. You know what I mean? Yep. So to find out who's better, one of you's got to step out and try and hit, and the other one's got to step out and try and run. Well, what's funny is he even said that on his show. He was like, we're stepping out of our element to drag race, and they're stepping out of their element to build a car. He right. even told his guys in the shop that. Right. You know? So, but but where did they step out of their element? Because they didn't drag race. So, but the deal, and on the phone, we said, "You and your shop build your car, or whatever." They said, "They said Midwest Street Cars builds a car. They build a car, right?" So that we couldn't just go out and buy big old cars or whatever. And what was funny is he said three or four times, "No, you guys build it." Though. Yeah, because you guys build it because though. he knows that we have connections in drag racing and he didn't want us to be able to go out and borrow somebody else's car to race them with yep. to fit the rules. And we get it, you know what I mean? We didn't want them to do the same that same thing. Yeah. So then though all of a sudden like we get on the rules, we get on the phone, we hash out all the rules, everything's in stone, everything's golden. That was October 27th. I think that's I think that's right. You know what I mean? That was October 27th that we got on the phone and hashed out the rules. And there was a lot of witnesses to that. But as many times as he said, you guys build it, you guys build it, you guys build it, we said, you two race it, right. you two race it, you two and race so it. So they agreed. They said. They Richard said, or Aaron do. races, Richard drives. Richard or Aaron drives their or car. Or me or you drive Right. Ours. So So I'm going to drive our car with you being an alternate, right? Mm-hmm. That was our deal. And then we said we didn't care which one out of the two drove. Richard or Aaron drives. On race day, we don't care. Richard or Aaron drives. Well, then Richard agreed to that. Everybody agreed to that. They were like, yes, yes, yes. But they just assumed that Aaron would drive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and we, we knew that, but too. But Richard should have said on the phone, I don't want to be included in that. I'm not going to drive. So it should be Aaron or I have an alternate. You know what I mean? Yes. Or hell, one of the guys from the shop. Put the sleeveless dude in the car. Put yep. put Coy in the car. You know what I mean? But that's not really the way it went down. So we did this the way we do everything. We went fucking, we wanted to go full bore crazy on it and do this to the best of our ability and, and with what little budget we have. Well, and to be honest, the original Crow fit the rules to a T. You know, yeah, I mean, my first we car even was the talked, perfect car. We even talked. We said, look, nobody wants to see some new you know, pro mod or new car. So let's make it a muscle car between 67. I'm pretty sure that they wrote down 66 for some reason though, but we said 67 to 72 model. I think we said 66 to 72. They wrote down 67 to 72. 67. I was, I was giving them the opportunity to do an early Mustang because I figured that's what they would do. So, but dude, like Vintag, you know, steel roof and quarters, um, under 500 cubic inches, over 2,500 pounds, 66 to 72 muscle car. Mm-hmm. I so, know. And we even said, like, I asked them because I didn't feel like they wanted to build that fast of a car because Richard or Aaron had never been that fast. No, we said we could put stips and on it. I said, so let's stip it. I was like, we can do small tires. We can do stock suspension. We can make it to where it's not it's not that scary of a race car. You Because know I mean? you even told them on the phone a couple of times, look, guys. We're going to run threes. I said, with the rules. You let us build this I, car I with these them. rules. We're going to run threes. I said, with those rules, you guys understand that with those rules in place, there's a damn good chance that I'm going to run a three-second pass in this car. At 200 mile an hour. At 200 mile an hour. That's why I yes. told them on the phone. Because Richard was trying to get insurance. He was wanting Discovery or whoever to pay for insurance on the Because car. he wanted us to run quarter. Right. He wanted run, yeah. Because he, he wanted to, wanted to throw out, of our, out of our element and, and goes, run quarter. Goes, and yeah. we started laughing. And he said, yeah, 200 mile an hour. I was like, no, you don't understand. 200 in the eighth. Yeah. I'll go 200 in the eighth with those Yeah, we'll rules. go 240 in the quarter. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've been 236, you know, in those, yeah. with that same <laughs> shit. So, well, at half the boost. Yeah. But, so, yeah. it was like. If if he didn't if he wasn't prepared to do that or if he didn't want to drive he should have said don't include me in that yeah you know what I mean because if Let's something happens slow this fucking thing right. down and to a exactly. ten second car he, to where I, I can him, drive it I even told him I said you, I said we can put a cap on it yep just say it's got to be a ten second car a twelve second car eleven second car and Richard was like nope I don't want to get into all that crap again because, because you guys will bring a faster well, car not just that and he said that remember the last time he raced somebody he said he got accused of cheating the whole time he didn't want to put a bunch of steps on it didn't want to put a bunch of rules on it because he didn't want to cheat he didn't want to you know if he have to build it a certain way and then they get caught cheating 
He's like, I don't know about all the car stuff. I don't know what's this and what's that. Yeah, but Aaron was right there, and he right. knew. And so, so Aaron was the one who spoke up and so, said, look, I don't think we should cap any 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 power adder as long right. as you guys keep it under 500 cubic inches and we keep the minimum weight of the car at 2500 i yeah. feel like we can put whatever you well, want on it because at first they were talking about naturally aspirated yeah and, and i said man we can't afford that i told him i said dude i said we just don't have the money to do natural aspirate the money it would take because you'd, you'd have to build an nhra yeah. pro stock motor right which would have worked out convenient for them because that's what they that's what they had. Then they could have put it in their pro yeah. stock car. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have had to take it out. They would, then they wouldn't have had to. Uh, what did they say? Uh, it's too hopped up. Yeah, and then up. it wouldn't have been too hopped up for their pro stock chassis. Yeah. So those were the rules. <laughs> and, we just got way too much power, guys. <laughs> and in the middle, in the midst of all of it, I understand Richard's a busy dude. I understand he's got a lot going on. Yeah. You he's know got to I mean? sell his tequila and all, all right. that and, stuff. You know, and he's got he's got all lots of cities he has to go say woo in, and yeah, you know, he's got all the you know. Hell, every time he goes to the airport, it probably takes him three or four hours to take all that shit off. Yeah, you know to go mean? through the metal. The detector. dude's a busy dude, so I understand that he doesn't have the time to concentrate on this one hundred percent. This is our life. You know, I mean, we've yeah, been that's getting, what we do. We've been getting ready for races like this our whole life. And not so, to mention, we took the opportunity to uh, build you a new car too. Well, because that well, I mean, hey, if we're we're not like anyone else like that. So like those guys can, you know, I've seen those chopper shows and all that where those rich guys get on there and they build a chopper and then they give it away or they, yeah. they and put then it you in see a showroom 10, 10 somewhere. episodes later and that thing's still sitting in their garage. Yeah. And they get, well, they put it in a showroom somewhere or yeah. they donate it to somebody like, or they sell it. We can't do that. No, we can't. This car's going to get used. If we build a car, we, we have to, we have to keep it. That's why we're going to build something that we believe is cool. Yeah. Exactly. We can't build something that we don't like. Because then so, we're going to go, what the fuck are we going to do with that? Here, you're going to drive it. No, here, you buy me out of it. No, uh you buy me out of it. Fuck that. And, like, it, what really sucked is that we want, we thought about it. I thought about cheating. Like, I thought about, you know me, I'm a dirtbag. You know what I mean? I thought about cheating. I even respect somebody that will try hard enough to, to interpret the rules their own way. You know what I mean? That's a different. If yeah, you they interpret m- the rules your own they way. They missed a lot of that stuff bad. They didn't interpret it. No. They just blatantly didn't give a yeah. fuck. And that's like, pretty much slapping us th- in the face. We thought about it. We were like, hey, we got a new Murder Nova that's, that's like pretty close. We could thrash on this, finish this, and race this car. Yep. You know what I mean? And and that would be that'd be right up the alley. It's a it's small block, under 500. It fits the rules perfect. Like yeah, That would have fit every rule except build it yourself. Right. Exactly. Which... We, we we built a lot of the car, right? And, and we would have had to have built a lot of yes. lot more of the car if yes. we would have had to do it in that time frame. So, yes. but we thought about, but then it was like, man, if we do that, somebody they're just going to say, oh, they had that car months before then. They were yep. working on that car for a year before then. They've been talking about this forever. It's cheating, it's which, cheating, it's which cheating. Which they'd be right, you know. Then they'd be right. You know? So we were trying to, you know, we're trying to do it right, man. We wanted this to be a big deal. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest things that's ever happened to us. Yeah. We got asked to be in mega race. You know what I mean? Like, that's a big deal to us. We're the black eye on Discovery Channel as it is. So for them to step out and say, hey, we want y'all to be a part of this big deal. Like, that's cool as hell. We wanted So we wanted to make sure it was badass and do it right. And we felt like, you know, once we found out that the, the Laughlin's, were contacted and brought in to build the car and, and find the you know find the parts and, and pick everything out like yeah. you know yeah we didn't even we didn't even know Frankie the Madman Taylor was out there with them dude I mean dude's the baddest fucking blower guy on the planet and that kind of <laughs> hurt my feelings because I'm not I gonna, like Frankie I'm not gonna lie it kind of hurt my feelings that to know that here we are you know taking this as serious as we are and calling in every favor we have with parts companies and anybody we know and, and thrashing and looking and ripping shit off the building to put on the car you know, yeah. and doing all this knowing that he's treating it like a side project he's out looking at trans ams and shit while they're doing all you know what i mean he didn't pick one thing on the car nope. he didn't even pick what color it was going to be you know so like he, he wasn't involved in it at all this was a side project for him this was a here guys you do all this and then I'm going to show up and, and stand behind the car and go, woo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that kind of hurt man. Because then why weren't we just racing Laughlin motorsports? Yep. Why were we even racing gas monkey? And it also, it did, it took away from what the gas monkey guys, the sleeveless dude, Mike Coley and all those guys, it took away from what those guys can do because 
they didn't even get to showcase what they could actually do. It didn't show them building the car. Mike Coy didn't even paint it. They didn't even paint the car. Nope. You know what I mean? It got sent out. It got sent out to get wrapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it didn't. It, it literally didn't show them. All they did was put the motor in it. But I mean, it didn't show any of the build. Right. Well, except for it showed them put the rear end back in it. <laughs> and it's hard to say, you know, because. It is television, you know what I mean? So it's hard to say what they did when the TV, when the cameras were off. There was a lot of shit on our car that the producers couldn't catch because they have a schedule, and they can only work so many hours before they have to sleep and then so many hours before they have to come back. And and we were working around the clock nonstop. Well, we had to. You know what I mean? So, like, they didn't see me build the mid plate. They didn't see me put the motor in the car. Like, I did all that when no one was even here. Yeah, the front half. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, the whole front half of the car, or the or the back half stuff. That the whole, we, that we, we replaced did. the whole front half of the car, all the front bars, all the back bars, the double frame rail in the center. Like, we did all of that, you know. And so, like, we built the four link bars. None of that was none of that was done. Like, we did all that, and they didn't get to see all that because of TV time and because you know stuff is weird. So I can't say what all Gas Monkey did and didn't do, but what I can say is that. That four link and that rear end and that anti roll bar shit, dude. That shit just bolted right back into the car. Yeah, because well, they know. just took it out. Yeah, they just took, like they just took the blower off that motor. Yeah, they took still it, had the intake on it. I mean, they took the shit off so they could put it back on for the camera. You know, that sucks. But whatever. The thing that sucked more was that, in my opinion, it took away from what those gas monkey guys could do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. how much cooler would it have been if? The gas monkey guys, and I don't care if they bought a chassis. I don't care if no. they bought an old race car because honestly, in the time we had, how the hell are you going to completely tube chassis a car or whatever? You know what I mean? Like it'd be, it's tough for anybody to do, much less if you find one that's already half done. So, yeah, like, well, and to be honest, we could have used the the chassis just the way that that you bought it. I wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have got in it. That's what I'm saying, though. I wouldn't have got but it. But when we, I got the car, I'm, I mean, everybody knows that it's on the internet. When I bought the car, it was a rolling car. It yeah. had had wheels and tires and had a chassis on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we could have used that but if it was just for this race. But this was a car that you were going to keep. You were going to... Well, and the rules. Know? Remember, we, if we were going to do that, we might as well use the Nova. If we would have raced that car the way I bought it, it would have... There's no way. Everybody on, on the internet already posted the but pictures of the way I bought did. it. I understand that. But that's what that's what I'm telling you is yeah. so that's what hurt my feelings so much. That's what you know made it that's what hurt my feelings, you know, is the fact that it could have been so cool. It could have been Richard driving gas monkey guys building a race car and then us racing like it could have been real. It could have been cool. So Man. so it could have been like the rules. Yeah, it could have yeah, so Is that what you're saying? No, that's what it was supposed to be, but see yeah. Somewhere along the line, and I don't know if Richard has always been like this. I don't know him very well. But somewhere along the line, he either lost it or he never had it. And that's that real thing. You know what I mean? Because, like, nobody with any self-respect is going to bring in a whole outside race team and then let them build the car and drive the car and and then – fly in all these tuners and all the other stuff i mean you're supposed to be representing your shop you know what yeah. I mean? Re- put on put on for your shop put on for your city rep it you know what i mean nobody with any self-respect is going to do it that way because that that shows that it was just a side project to yeah. him you know well, what I mean? and not to mention if he would have just brought in a tuner or maybe a chassis guy and they well, we, did all the work we, and all that shit, then, then then that would be understandable. We even talked about it in the beginning. We were like, you know, he's not going to be able to tune the car. Nobody well, we his, knew he'd nobody bring his a shop, Nobody at his shop can tune the car. And that's understandable. Nobody at his shop can, you know, can really set up a chassis on a race car. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, like, there's guys that can give you good starting points. There's guys, there's, there's ways you can learn. I mean, Jerry Bickle has a book, and I learned a lot every, from that To book. this day, every time I scale my car, I get that book out and read it. You know, and... Just to make sure I don't mess it up. The guys in his shop could have had the opportunity to step up. Richard didn't give them that opportunity, but he, they could have. Those guys could have stepped up and learned about chassis and learned about race cars and learned about four links and it's learned a one-time about shops. Deal. 
<laughs> but it didn't have to be. It could have been a multi time deal. I know. This could have been a whole new deal where we we, we could have raced them once a year. Yep. We could have raced them twice a year. We could have done this in rematches and everything else. Like, you know, it could have been cool, man. And but instead And that's what at first we thought that it was gonna be. Right. You know, I and was really excited, we excited about this. That's deal. That's what we were so excited about. It's because Discovery Channel was excited about it. We were excited about it. We thought, man, can you imagine? Can you imagine both shows going going at it? Can you imagine Richard behind the wheel against Big Chief behind the wheel? Like, can you imagine Midwest Streetcars, our monkey versus their, you know what I mean? Like, our guys versus their, like, dude, it could have been big for everybody. It could have been big for both brands. Instead, it's going to be really big for us and not so much for him. Because, I mean, you know, let's face it, he treated this like a side project. Yep. He didn't want anything to do with it. So he brought in somebody else, and it's clearly not Richard's car or Richard's shop's car yep. because the Laughlins are posting it everywhere, saying "my bay" and "this is my girl, this is my car." I can't wait to sh- show you guys my new car. And uh, then he's going to he's talking about going to all these races with it and all these NHRA races with it. He keeps the car at his shop. Like what's his? They had to go do it's be- his car. So. They, yeah, they had to go do beauty shots for the show and take beautiful pictures of the car to put on the racing episode to, for the look back, you know what I mean? To match the two cars up. And do you think that they called Richard? Yeah. He didn't know anything about it. No. Do you think they did? They didn't even call Richard because Richard doesn't know where the car is. Richard doesn't have the car. Richard's not Richard's car. So they called the owner of the car and they had to go to the Laughlin's to take pictures of it. Like (coughs) that, took away from everybody he could have look he could have put that car on the wall just as easy as alex did (laughs) and then and then he would have saved a little face do you realize the fan base and i mean even me i would have fucking respected the dude a little bit if he would have just got behind the wheel of the car i mean he had how many days we added it up how many days was it uh, 105. 105, 105 days, days. He knew that he that we were going into this deal, and we talked about it on the phone. And he knew that him or Aaron was going to race. So 105 days. You mean to tell me you can't get an NHRA license? Or I mean, he wouldn't even need one of those. You can't get. The dude's got to know how to drive a little bit. He cuts fucking donuts all the time. I'm not saying he's ever been in anything really fast, but he. He's a car guy, kind of. So he's more business side of it. But the dude can drive. You see him doing donuts and Will- peeling out and fucking all kinds of stuff. Willard Kinsler is 90 years old. Yes. And he can drive a race car. Yes. And he didn't drive race cars his whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just saying he had plenty of time he where he days. could have made this deal. I mean, I would have respected. You know how many people, how many more people would like him out there? How many more people would watch oh, his show? Dude. How many of our fans would have translated over into to liking him? If he, it, I mean, win, lose, That's crash the fucking said. car, no matter what. You know, winning. I've, I've always yeah, said. I know what it is. Winning, winning is, is relative. relative. I've relative. said that a hundred times. Winning is relative. Now, Richard could have said fuck all the bullshit i agreed that me or aaron would drive this car and aaron quit now i gotta stand up be a man of my word and drive this car it's not something i want to do i'm not necessarily happy about it but i made a deal i'm gonna follow the rules i'm gonna jump in this car and it wouldn't have mattered if he crashed it wouldn't have mattered if he lost it wouldn't have mattered if he launched in reverse he would have gained so much respect yep. from his fans and from our fans, and he would have made fans out of us. He'd have made fans out of everybody yep. because the America, we've proven this, America doesn't care if you win or lose as much as they do. You're a man. You stand up for what you believe in, and you ha- you're passionate about something. Yeah, and you get out there and you do it. Richard's not passionate about anything. Money. Obviously. Money. And that's why as soon as we got there, and you know, what even, hang on, we'll, I want to back up even more. Before we, I mean, we'll, we'll stop talking about this eventually, but this is a big deal right now. <laughs> yeah, we can't really get into everything that I want to get into. Well, because you know, it hasn't next aired week. yet. Yeah. But we, when we sat down and made the rules, I told Richard, you realize with these rules, these cars are going to be fast insane fast three g's off the starting line fast 
I know that because I've built these, I haven't built them, you know, because we don't build cars, but I've worked on them, I've driven them, you know what I mean? I've started with half ass chassis and put them together. Like, yep. I've tuned them. I've been all over the country tuning cars like this. Like, I said, you realize this is going to be a really fast car, Richard? Oh, yeah. No, we want to go fast. We want to go yep. fast. He, the rules didn't have to reflect three and four second cars. No. He could have said, look, I'll be honest, I'm not comfortable with driving a car that fast. So let's put some rules on it to yep. slow this deal down. Let's do small tire. Let's do whatever. He could have done that, but... But but he didn't. He wanted to let his balls hang without no. letting his balls hang. Even even worse than that, I would respect him if he wanted to let his balls hang. Even worse than that, he didn't give a fuck because he didn't plan on doing anything. He didn't plan on being there. He didn't plan on driving the car. He didn't plan on working on the car. He didn't, ha- he didn't plan on learning anything about drag racing. So he didn't care what the rules were because he knew that he wasn't going to be around. He was going to fly in the day of the race stand behind a car, make all the noises and jingly shit, yep. and, and have a fake red rag hanging out of his back of his pocket. I mean, as far as I'm concerned... The heart sunglasses. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, if that's a scarf. Yeah, that's not, it's not a red rag. Just because you put a red shop rag in your pocket, that don't make you a car guy. That doesn't yeah. make you a mechanic. That doesn't... And, and anybody that is car guys or mechanics or racers or, or even street rod guys... They're gonna. They're not gonna have one lick of respect for you if you put a brand new clean shop rag in your pocket when you get off the airplane. Well, and it's six feet long, so well because nobody can see it without it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I mean, it hang, hang, hangs down to his ankles. Yeah. You know? Well, he's a little guy. He didn't got no butt. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's gonna hang way down there. You know, man ain't never done a squat in his life. <laughs> so it just. It sucks because it could have, and, and I told him all. It's not like no, I'm, it's we, not like I'm talking, this on the phone. It's not like I'm talking shit behind his back here. I told him every bit of this in person to his face yep. multiple times. So he didn't have to get an any trailer license, but if he wanted one, he had 105 days. Yep. The hell, the track that we were going to meet him at has that. houses the yeah. Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. He could have went to that school while we were there and got his license. You know, I know plenty of people that have jumped in race cars and learned to drive them. You have a gas pedal. You ain't gonna have to stay in it till it hits no, the wall. No, and that's that's a lot of things that I've said to people on the street. Are you scared to go down this road? Really? I mean, you Butt have off. you you had you control that car. So it's not a roller coaster. No, no. If car, it, it, I mean, no once carny. you let off the button. There isn't a point of no return. Yeah, there's you no, just let off. Now, if you push it beyond the point of no return, sideways or whatever, that's on you. Yeah. But there's no carny that just got out of prison looking at uh, child porn on his flip phone, not paying attention while the roller coaster's out of control. That's not happening. You're in there yourself. Is it just me or is Phantom high as fuck? He looks at look at him. He's just chilling. He does. He kind of he kind of looks a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He enjoys it. Yeah. Well, open your eyes. <laughs> so, <laughs> dock him a day's pay for napping on a job. <laughs> dock that chink a day's pay. Um, so, it's unfortunate that it didn't go down that way, but yeah, here we are. You know what I mean? Uh, I felt like we got cheated because it could have been way cooler than what it was. I feel like. The Laughlins got cheated because they were thrown I in. I feel like the Gas the Monkey mix. Shop got now, cheated. More than anything, the Gas Monkey guys themselves got cheated because they're the ones who are gonna, who are looking the worst here. They didn't get a chance to step up and show what they can do. They were basically there to to help the Laughlins, mm-hmm. and they were there to make TV. You know what I mean? Like that sucks for them because those guys are talented. They do build some cool cars. They could have learned and stepped up and you'd find out who in that shop can learn about a four link yeah. in, in 105 no days. Shines. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, Oh, well, you know what I mean? Here we are now. And now yeah. the whole internet is shitting all over those guys, you know, and it's really not their fault. Richard, put them all in this situation. You know, yep. that's what sucks. And, and, and he Rich, doesn't give a fuck. No, he blamed it all on the film crew. He yeah. blamed, you know, blamed all of them. Oh, the rules, this and that. So it just, whatever, man. Uh, yeah. But we can go, it's we can very go more interesting. Next, yeah, week. It's very, next Tuesday. Yeah. We're going to do another podcast next Tuesday. So we can, we can finish that up then. That'll be after the next episode anyway. Yes. But make sure and tell everybody you can to go watch this next episode. The next two episodes on Monday night, 
because they're going to be um, – I'm not kidding you. They're going to be amazing. I I truly hope they show they're everything the way that it went down. And you can't – in my opinion, you're not going to be able to be a Street Outlaws fan if you weren't – if you don't completely buy into this and invest in this because the future of Street Outlaws has a lot to do with this race and and the special – the the amount of – energy that we had surrounding our crew and our car and our shop and that's going to transfer over into street outlaws and if you're a fan or even thought about you were ever a fan of that show you really need to tune into this mega race deal because it's going to you're going to be lost if you don't trying to watch street outlaws because it's not going to make a whole lot of sense yeah um plus you know you get to see frankie taylor yeah Looking good up there on the starting line. Al Bundy of drag racing. Yeah, <laughs> fucking right, man. That guy's <laughs> awesome. I really do like him. I, I do. Frankie Taylor's one of the most one of the most genuine people I've yep. ever met in my whole life. Yeah, he did pretty um, good last weekend. And in the end of this whole deal, I end up with a car that is as special, if not more, than my original Crow. I never thought I would ever be able to get in another car that I loved as much as that car or that felt as much like home yeah. as that car does. It's it was it was really weird cuz like when we were building the car the first time you got fitted in it for the seat and the pedals and and everything you just <clears throat> you felt you looked like you were comfortable in that car. I I don't know what it is. I it's unexplainable. Like it's and it's not that body style, it's not that kind of car, it's not this that it's not even the fact that it has steel roof and quarters. That's cool. Yeah. But that's not the deal. It's that car is super special. It was special before I got it. And it's even more special now because my same group of ride or die homies and now employees and, and, and people family. That, and family. Family. Yeah. I mean, the same ride or die who homies back then are the ones that helped me build this car this time and put this car together for me this time and made sure I was safe and made sure that, you know, that's the thing. Jesse James, you know, one of the coolest dudes that's ever lived. A lot of guys don't like him and he's kind of a prick or whatever. But And I know he doesn't really like us, I'm sure. I've yeah. been told he doesn't like yeah. us. But you know what? He probably doesn't give a shit. But, yeah. But I can tell you what, man. He said something on Instagram of all places. He said something there not too long ago that just got me. It said, you can you can buy a man's time. You can buy a man's knowledge. You can buy a man's physical attributes. You can even pay a man per hour to do a task all day long. But you can never buy a man's passion. You can never buy his enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, getting someone to be passionate about the project at hand or to be enthusiastic about what they're doing with you, <clears throat> that's something you can't buy. That's something that you earn. You you have done enough for them or been there for them or did whatever it took at a certain point to to make them invest in you and invest in the project that's going on and be passionate about it and everybody that was here and everybody all of our crew and all the guys in the shop and everybody that even the film crew and the production crew yeah we were all passionate about this project that's the reason we all work together so well and we all have our own certain things you know that shine and we've been together for so long you know, and that's one of the reasons why we didn't want to build a Camaro or a Mustang or whatever, because it it would have been kind of empty or weird like the Crow Mod. You know what I mean? Like the car is cool, but I mean, it just it doesn't have that special thing. It doesn't it's just have another that, Crow Mod. It doesn't. It have, has its place. It does. But it does not on the street with us and not in this race. You know, what I mean, and not not in our hearts. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's it's fun. You know, it's fun to drive at the track, especially on a small tire, but it just doesn't have that that thing you know Mm. what i mean and and that's uh that's what makes this new car to me so special and i see it and the only reason i want to talk about that is because i see a lot of people on instagram and a lot of my fans a lot of our fans a lot of fans of the cars and the show 
you know, they, they're, they're talking on there amongst each other and, you know, they'll say things like, well, what do you guys like? You guys like, cause they'll do those polls to get people to comment and get more likes and more energy around their Instagram pages. And people say, what do you like? Do you like chief's original car or the crow mod? Or do you like chief's original car or his new car? Or they'll put a picture up of my old car and my new car. And, you know, and they, they try and get people to talk. And I, I read some of those and man, the fans are so great and they, they know me. And so they say things like, yeah, but that original car, he loved that car. Yeah. It wasn't just another car. That was a part of him. His heart was in that car. His soul was in that car. That car was special to him. There'll never be another one like it. And they're right. And they're right. You know, they're right. But this new car is every bit as special to me as the old car was already. Yeah. Just because of the people involved and the, what we did with it and, and how, how we all came together, you know, and, and the history that it's had and the car had history before me. So, yeah. you know, all those things together just is a combination for a love, you know, a real love. And the car has plus a real it's soul. Fucking awesome. And God damn, it's <laughs> fucking fast. It is awesome. And it is fast. Yeah. And it is ugly. It is ugly as all. Hell. Yeah. Just the wings ugly, but dude, it just reminds me of a half dead crow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we took parts off the dead crow. We took parts off the new crow. We took parts off the crow mod. We put all that shit together and we have like a half dead, pissed Ugh. off, yeah, stinky, smelly, just ugly. Just mean as fuck. Just mean as shit. You know, like if you took a crow, a pet crow, and you put it in the pet cemetery and it came back. Yeah. You know yeah that's they, what it would look like. Got, it got some bones hanging, yeah. your skin hanging off. <laughs> not not all the feathers are on it, kind of like the doors. Yeah, exactly. Not quite. Yep. Not quite the same. Ass you know end of the car is just beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's the way I look at that car. Man, it just reminds me so much of what we did together with the old car and this car and the Chrome mod. And so it's just a it's a really, really neat piece, and I'm I'm falling in love with it more and more every day. And uh, I'm 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 not really ready to paint it yet. No, nah, I mean we don't have time anyway. No, you know, even even if we'd we have did, to, we'd have to split the whole car apart. And there's so much of it that we didn't have time to paint. Or yeah, the cage coat. isn't even painted. We didn't have time to do any of that, so you can't paint the outside of the car. Now, and anybody the cage who and wanted to see what all we've done to the car, you can look and tell what's been painted and what hasn't. You know, I yeah. mean. So many new bars that are are unpainted. I mean, yep. And you know that's not me. Everybody knows that's not me. I like a pretty car. I like a car that looks like it came together. There's a lot nice. of stuff on this car that wasn't you, I and like, it still turned out yes. pretty amazing. I like a car that looks like it was well thought out. I like a car that that's special, and shiny, and beautiful. Blah blah blah. You know, and and this car, we did it a little different. I had, none to, of those. I had to step out of my comfort zone in a lot of ways to to be able to be okay with this car. But now. Phew, I love it for who it is. All yeah. of its flaws, I accept. Yeah, that's it, right. You know? So, it's fucking awesome. And one day when it earns the the paint job, I'm gonna paint it. You know what I mean? But it's it's gonna have to go to the top and kick ass and and then. Uh, but what color though? Is it gonna be white or black? Honestly, uh, I think it's a. I think it's gonna. I think it's a black car. Yeah, I really do. I think it's a black car. You know, um, maybe one day the thought of that of losing that other car won't be so fresh and i'll be able to paint it white but right now i i feel like it'd be you know putting my dead grandma's dress on my new grandma you know what i mean i don't want to do that it's a little weird not yet so but black i'm i'm it could go black you know what i mean and it'd look killer black not with oh, those yeah. stripes though jesus i like those stripes you know man. you would I like um, how they shine <laughs> like a fucking street sign fuck yeah um for those of you that are wondering and commenting and everything else uh i don't think i'm gonna do the nhra thing I'm just gonna let it out here right here on the podcast yeah, i don't i think i'm gonna pass on that deal i think i'm gonna pass on the nhra thing um just didn't didn't really Seem, didn't really end up being what I wanted to do right now. Maybe in the future, you know. I still have the crow mod. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing op- says you got to do it right now. If the opportunity presents itself in the future, and I feel like it's the right deal with the right people, you know, maybe we'll put the pro mod in any trade trim. But for right now, it's covered up, sitting there, and I'm gonna street race with my buddies. 
I'm not real sure. <laughs> I'm not real sure why we'd do that anyways. <laughs> if the NHRA deal comes up, the new car's faster. <laughs> Man, you ain't lying. But you know the crow. We mod- just we just do whatever we can for that thing to pass tech, which would be Oof. a lot, Oof. and then uh, race it. Um, I don't think they'd allow that. Somebody get tetanus or something. Yeah, somebody be like, "Look, you can't have that steel car." Yeah, it'd out be here. like bringing the the gray cat from Pet Cemetery to a cat show. Yep, church. Be like, whoa, 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 church! No, get church. that, get him out of here. He got dirt and shit all in between his yeah. toes. Uh, It'd be like be like my car. Every time you make a pass, just leave shit all over the track. That's why the uh, the new shirts and shit for the new crow are gonna be like that. That's what I want them to be like. They're gonna be like we buried this car in the pet cemetery and came back. You know what I mean? Resurrected. Yeah, dirt all falling out from underneath it, and you know it it dug its way out of the grave and came home like like church or uh, what was the little boy's name from pet cemetery? Wasn't it Aiden? I think it was. The kid's name was Aiden. Damn. All I know is the one part from that movie I'll never forget. And we, we that road. Yeah, that road. That road there. That's a dangerous road. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As far as the meet and greet stuff, we ain't really got nothing on the schedule. We don't plan on doing anything in the near future. We have. We got a whole lot of street racing to do this year. Yes, we have. Uh, we're finishing season nine. Starting season 10, uh, we're going to hit 100 episodes this year, hopefully. That's a big deal. Shoo. And um, the next meet and greet isn't in the near future anyway. The next race that we're going to hit at the racetrack isn't in the near future. Uh, we're going to hold off for a little bit. Uh, I'd like to hit you know, a radio race this winter, you know, October or something like that. But I don't know. If the opportunity presents itself and we got some time off, yep, let's do it. I Other wanna, than that, I mean, you know, SEMA and PRI. Yep. It's really Seaman the only thing that we, you, you know, you can usually count on we're going to be at. Yep. Um, there's none, none of the no preps are really jumping out at me or interesting. It looked like it's something I want to go do right now. Um, they're so confusing on different – there's too many promoters and, you know, there's too many races and there's too many rules yeah. and, and you don't know what is what. You don't know who is who. And then – not only that, but I'm a little pissed off, to be honest with you. Like, I get on there to look around at the rule, new rules and new no preps and see who's doing what and who's winning and shit. And there ain't no new rules. Well, start them from inside the car. Give me a break. Yeah, that's that's the only yeah. fucking new rule. You start well, that Armageddon, pro mod in, <coughs> Arm- inside the fucking car. Armageddon's rules are you can never have, if you have a pro mod, you're not allowed if you. You can never have entered a professional pro mod sanctioned race by the NHRA or NMCA. Oh, well, that puts a lot of people out. No, no, two. It puts two puts people. You only, Je- puts you only, and Jeff Lutz out. There's only two people that fit those rules, me and Jeff Lutz. That's so cool. So it's like you, we can't bring the pro mods that haven't won a fucking thing yet. You know what I mean? But they're going to allow all those pro mods that are still kicking everybody's ass. Yeah. Like, they're going to allow yeah. them in. So – You know, uh, and I'm a little pissed off because they use, they're really tricky about the promoting. You know what I mean? They'll promote it with old pictures of the race with our cars in them, Mm -hmm. or they'll promote it with come see the street outlaws, but they don't tell you that it's like, you know, (laughs) season one street outlaws. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't tell you that it's, uh, Varley fucking (laughs) Varley going to be out there. Varley and the, the, uh, the nutty oh, professor, whatever the dude's name is, with farm trucking them. Yeah, the uh, mad scientist. Yeah, <laughs> the nutty professor. Yeah, <laughs> the nutty professor. Hey, pretty close. Same. Pretty close. Is a synonym. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they don't tell you that those are the street outlaws that are coming. They just say street outlaws are going to be here or whatever. Well, and that's why a lot of people get mad at us because they're like, "Well, they said the street outlaws were going to be there. How come Yo, y'all didn't show up?" Heard you guys were coming to Amarillo. Yeah. 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 We heard you guys were going to be at the five and dime, you know, <laughs> over in the east side of Chicago last weekend. And y'all wasn't there. Hey, I might have you know? been there. Yeah, you could have been there. There's up there in Cicero. Me and my boy Fletcher Cox be shooting dice. <laughs> um, Who the fuck is that? That's the trash truck. Oh, cool. Uh, but yeah, they're all using us to promote it. And it's not right. Yeah. Because. When we don't show up, 
people get mad at us. They're mad at us. They're not mad at the promoter because they ask the promoter, "Where's Chief and Sean?" And they say they say stupid shit like, "Oh, they well, they, they, they didn't show up. They I don't didn't know. Show up or they were they're too good for this race or oh they're in those contracts. They're not allowed to go anywhere unless Discovery says so. That's all bullshit. Yeah. The real deal is they didn't want to pay us enough to be there. The promoter cheap ass wouldn't pay me enough to come. Yeah. That's the, I mean, to be honest. I mean, if we're going to be somewhere, it's going to be on our Facebook pages or our Instagrams, something like right. that. If not, race, not somebody else's. And if the race is cool enough, we go for free. Yeah. I don't course. ask nobody to pay me to go to a race if it's badass. Yep. But if it's not something that I am really interested in doing, then you're going to have to pay, just like everybody else, you're going to have to pay me a lot of money to come in on Sunday. Yep. You know? Uh, especially if I got to fucking shovel shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a shitty job. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you about done with that shit? <laughs> hey, when you get done with that shit, I got some more shit for you to do. <laughs> I'm about tired got, of this shit. I got all kinds of shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you doing Sunday? I got some shit to do. I, got, I already got shit to do, man. Sorry, I can't I got, make it. I got a whole list of shit to do. This shit is piling up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this shit. I'm going to lunch. <laughs> Fuck this shit. This shit can wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's getting out of control. All right, man. We can fucking every time somebody says something like this, we talk. We talk, we do this for thirty fucking minutes. I got oh, shit to talk about, man. <laughs> we could talk about this shit all day. <laughs> all right, man. That's it. I'm done with this shit, man. We're... Don't bring this shit up again. <laughs> All right, man. That's it. That's it. For reals, though. That's drop it. the shit. Drop, drop, drop the shit. Cut this shit out. Cut this shit. Oh, All right. All right. God, it's a it's a little running man. inside joke. We have a septic tank out back that sometimes we got to pump that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a shitty deal. We know. <laughs> and there's people out there that get paid to deal with that shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Every once in a while, we have to handle that shit on our own. The first time we had a professional come deal with that shit, he charged us too much money. We can't afford that shit. We can't afford that shit. Oh, Oh, man. So the shit was piling up. (laughs) Yeah. Every once in a while, you go in the bathroom and uh, they don't work with shit. (laughs) And... And so the septic tank gets full. And so then, (laughs) yeah, it's full of shit. So then we have to deal with that because we, you know, we can't afford some guy to come out. And every time they come out, they tell us, oh, you're not going to fix this shit. (laughs) (laughs) They They always say something like, man, there's too much rain and shit around here. (laughs) And they're like, oh, this shit's old as fuck. Yeah. (laughs) This shit's never going to (laughs) work. You guys need to fix this shit. Correct. (laughs) <laughs> and so we just get a, a little sump pump and we pump that shit out into the parking lot. <laughs> and uh usually you know. Kentucky deals with that shit. <laughs> That's not the shit I like to deal with. <laughs> God damn it, stop. You're so much better at this than me. Every time this happens, I, you're just so much better at this shit. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I, I fucks like, with shit. It's, it's like then and then. I'm just no good at it. <laughs> Man. I don't know when to use either one. Oh, fuck. God damn. Every time I, I do know. that in the shop, I get in the, I get to fucking laughing because yeah. Sean keeps doing that. Jesus. Yeah, we could do it for a good 30 fucking minutes. Yeah. And then eventually Kentucky gets mad. He's, fuck this shit. <laughs> I ain't doing I this quit. shit no more. <laughs> get somebody else to do this shit. Yeah. I've been dealing with y'all shit for too fucking long. <laughs> All right, we got stuff. No, no more. No more. That's okay, that's it. That's it. Oh, God. Okay, uh, <sighs> so. Now my stomach hurts. Yeah. So the radio, if the, you know, the no prep and all them races and all the fucking meet and greets, they're all using our name and shit to promote it. Just remember, guys, 
if it's not on our own shit, <laughs> it's not our shit. Uh, if we don't post it ourselves, then we're probably not going. Yep. You know, it's a, uh, it's like a, it's a grave digger problem. It is. Grave digger can't is. go to all the hey, monster jams. I went to a monster jam one time, and I was very, very disappointed because grave digger wasn't there. Yeah, and you thought, man, because you know you who wanted too good for Oklahoma you know, City? you know, my kid wanted to see, well, wanted digger. to see the fucking grave digger. Yeah, he wasn't there. Nope. And that's that's the problem. So I was then, gonna write somebody a letter, but I didn't know who. <laughs> so I just dealt with that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what sucks about today. Nowadays, you can just get online. Yep. And bash them, and you don't have to write them a letter. Yep. You know, back in the day, you used to have to fucking write a letter, put it all in there, lick a stamp, put it yeah. on an envelope, send it to somebody, wait two or three weeks. Hey, if you wrote somebody a letter, you was really mad. You can get on the internet and handle that right, right fucking now. Yep. I mean, you got to be mad for quite a while to write a letter. No, it's it, you're you're mad the whole way home. Yeah. <laughs> and mad enough to put it on pen and paper. Yep. You know, uh, so. No, we're not really going to be at any of the races anytime soon or meet and greets or any of that. But if you, uh, if you're putting on a legal street race, holla, that's something, <laughs> that's the shit we're interested in. That's the shit we're going to do all year. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, that's all my notes. How long is that? Well, I say without getting into anything else because there's so much other stuff that I want to talk about. So much other shit. After the next couple episodes, there'll be a bunch more. Yeah, after after the next couple of episodes, I mean, really, that's kind of why we've been holding off. I know it's been a while since we've had a Tuesday, but we've we been, can't we've been, we can't control ourselves. We can't. We I mean, here, we've already gonna, said more than what we, we yes. probably should have. No, we're going to be in trouble, we're and gonna get, uh, we're, we're going to get in trouble from somebody, probably where at Discovery or Pilgrim or Street Outlaws. Our lawyers. High ups. Who knows? Somebody Your is going to fucking bitch about what we're saying. And that's the reason <laughs> sometimes it's hard to get in here. I mean, this was a two-day podcast because we just couldn't get it all done in one day. Shit happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yesterday, we were in the middle of the podcast and some shit came up. Yeah, some <laughs> shit came up and you had to go. And I had to bounce. <laughs> Anyways. It was way more so, important than this shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. we've already said too much, but the last next couple of episodes where we can really fucking get into to what happened and we can explain everything. But now that we're here and we're not going, I don't see us going out of town anytime soon. We don't have anything on the schedule. We're not getting ready for any other big races but street racing. I can see us. <laughs> Except Memphis next we week. We will not be in the fucking mess chat next week. Let's just be on. Why? Right now. We're going to be in Memphis. Remember that race that we're going to? <laughs> I will strike that from record, but let's be honest with them and say we will not be in the fucking mess next week. Well, it depends. No, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, I'm leaving on Sunday. <laughs> Just say that we're going to We could do, do one from yeah, Memphis. We're going to do, no. We're going to do a podcast to recap the last two episodes of Mega Race, to totally recap Mega Race. No, we need to do a podcast after this next episode. I feel like we do too in Memphis. We do it right there in Jeff Lutz's fucking. I'm, I'm fine with it, it's, it's but we you just know it, it won't happen we after can, you haul all the shit down there. <laughs> we can do it in the hotel room. I'm good with it. You Which one? Who's, who's Her, hotel room? Hers. <laughs> <laughs> the one we're gonna have to get the fuck out of. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that's one, not in our names. Yeah, the one. Okay, so we'll be in the we'll be in the fucking somebody's mess chat next week. Yep. We got to after Monday, dude. Yeah, after we Monday do. night, we got to do another podcast. Yep. So don't strike it from the record. Let them know that we're serious and we're, we're serious about this. We want to do it bad. Do we let anybody know that we're going to be in Memphis next week? No. Okay. We're not going to be in Memphis for the race. Oh, yeah. No, we're not. Are we're we? not going to be in Memphis for the race. Just for the testing. God damn it. You're an idiot. We're not going to be in Memphis at all for any racing. No, I know we're that. We're going there to buy drugs. He's taking that out of the... Out of the he's not. He's striking it. No. Yep. We're not even live. <laughs> You're an idiot. You're such an idiot. Oh my god. Oh, uh, one more thing. Sean got his yeah. <laughs> what? Shut up. Shut armpit up. tattooed. Up. What? Oh. <laughs> Sean got his armpit tattooed, guys. Whatever. He tattooed a black widow in his armpit. It hurts. It hurts. Like no tattoos feel good, but. 
you were looking pretty tattooed up at the last episode. I had to step up my game. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do the armpit thing? Yeah. Yeah. So that I can point up, point up all the time like this. When you put your armor okay. up, there's a black widow under your fucking arm. Yeah. There is, is there any sort of like meaning behind that? No, I thought it was fucking awesome. And you, didn't, you ran out of places to put it? Nope. I just thought it would be cool there. In your armpit? Mm-hmm. I don't really get tattoos for any other reason but myself. I like it. No, I, that's what I'm saying. I like it. I like it a lot. Like, a lot of people get tattoos and they say, put it on this side so that people can see it when my arm's out the window. You know? I don't really do that. But what if you what if you lose your license? Well, then you... See, you notice which side of my arm's tattooed up on. I was always the dude that didn't have a truck. I always, I always rode on the passenger side. Yeah, now I'm the guy who doesn't ride in other people's trucks. So, Yeah, I really like tattoos. I do, too. I told you. I try to tell you not to get any. I know. You, you that's, a, right. that's, a, that's a dark, long road that you're Ooh. headed right down. Yeah. No, I'm I'm down it. No, no, no. Yeah, you you're full blown. I'm in the cul-de-sac. You're full blown. You you're full blown. I'm fucking, just looking for the door. You're in the fuck it. Yep. Yeah, I feel like eventually I'm gonna have one on my face. I think so. I'm gonna do one above my eyebrow. Okay. Yeah. The fucked up eyebrow. Yep, that's fucked up, Sean. God, I know. No. I know. I remember whenever that shit ate that fucking skin off of your eyebrow. That sucks so bad. What was it? People carburetor? don't know. People don't know why I wear my hat so low. I wear my hat so low because I had a flesh eating experience. God damn, it was horrible. It was. I was working on a mini bike, and I had put some. It, the The cylinder wasn't freed up. It wouldn't wouldn't do anything. So that I bitch was some, locked up. Yeah. So I put some. I put some Rizlone in the cylinder. Let it sit for a couple of days. I didn't do nothing. And then I put some tranny fluid in there, and I didn't do nothing. And then I put uh, some PB blaster or something there. I didn't do nothing. I put some brake clean in there. Chem tool. And then I put some yeah brake chem tool, and I put some solvent in there. And I put all that stuff in there, and it never never worked. Well, then finally one day, I was looking at it (laughs) when it worked. You was looking in the eye of the hole. Yeah. So there was the plug. I had the spark plug out of the cylinder, and I was looking down in there, and I fucking that motherfucker turned to over and i took my arm and i fucking tried to kick it over and it turned over and dude all that shit that had been sitting in there and just fermenting Mixing up yeah just all the chemical reactions yeah. going on it in just there. money shot right in my face yeah i mean it yacked all over my fucking <laughs> face yeah it did and it just and ate it, your skin up and it was like it was like getting uh <laughs> it was like getting a facial from uh <laughs> who's like a fucking really bad like the Hulk it was like getting a facial from the Hulk uh, or somebody somebody with radioactive shit in them yeah one of the X-Men uh, yeah I got a facial from one of the X-Men so then it, that shit the all those chemicals like were sitting on my face and just started eating in eating my skin and it made big holes in my eyebrows it's weird though it's really just in your fucking eyebrow like, that shit, when it first happened, it was all over your face. Yeah. All that healed, though. Yeah, you but can't the, really but see the any eyebrow of that. Part, the problem is, when I cleaned my face and shit and tried to wipe my face off, I couldn't wipe it out of the eyebrow. It was under the hair of my eyebrow, my big hairy unibrow. Yeah. So you I, don't got a unibrow. I, well, I shave it. What? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that? No. Yeah. If I didn't shave in between my eyes, I'd look like Eddie Munster. <laughs> no shit! <laughs> Hey, I think you should grow that shit out, man. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> hey, hey, man, it's who you are. It's who, yeah. it's who you are, no, man. Let, let her grow. If I let that shit grow out, I'd be walking around the grocery store. They'd be like, can I help you? Like, I'm just browsing. <laughs> I'm just browsing. <laughs> May I browse? Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. I thought um, we were done with this. No, and I had to bring up your fucking eyebrow, man. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Just one big one. That's all right shit happens yeah you know you're i was born that way and then i yeah. do about it that's what i'm saying man live with it it's yeah. who you are and i'm lucky i got this go. fucking fully functional brain and a big dick because the ears and the eyebrow thing just just put me down yeah it put me behind well he had to give you something good yeah yeah that he way, was like that he way, looked at you and went Ugh. 
Give them a big dick. We got to give them a prize. <laughs> gotta- if they, if they give the girl a prize, because if she makes it past the ears and the eyebrows, she deserves it. Yep. <laughs> yep. I guess that's why I'm so good looking. <laughs> he said, "We are, look, we already did too much for this guy." <laughs> There's no prize at the end of that there rainbow. Ain't no prize here. <laughs> if a girl's with him, it's because she loves him. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, that's yep. it. We're going to get in trouble. So then then they made hats. Yes. And I found out you can put them over your ears and your eyebrows. Yeah. The big hat. Yep. All right, then. Uh, I think we did enough. We yeah. did enough damage for one, one we Tuesday. Did, we did a whole lot but of damage. But we promise. Woo. We Woo. Prom- I promise. Woo. I'm putting my you gonna word. You're going to do it? I'm putting my word tell on the I line. Tell them I said it. Tell them I said it. Tell them I said it. I'm putting my word on the line. As a man. As a man. I will do another podcast. <laughs> you you going to do it? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday? I, Ish? Next week, next I will week? do a podcast. After the episode airs Monday night, for all these people that are going to go watch it and tell their friends about it and make the ratings huge, for all those people, I'm doing it for them. <clears throat> I will come. I will be in, on a podcast talking about the episode for them. So I don't really want to nail anything down <laughs> any more than a week. But next week, I'm gonna do it. Yep, Tuesday. I, I'm a, I'm I'm really gonna make a strong attempt at Tuesday. Yeah, I really am. I think we can make that happen. I think so too. Every Tuesday. If it doesn't happen, though, we should make this a weekly deal. Yeah, I don't know. We got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shit in the shop and he's he's attending to. Uh yeah. But the plan is Tuesday. Yes. Another podcast. Yes. Boom. Phantom, mark it down. Yep. Right the Put it on the calendar. Yep. Tell them I Next said Tuesday. It. And we're gonna go out to the shop and deal with this shit. <laughs> Peace.